to kind of kick it all off, the very first one is surrounding ourselves with people that have already been where we want to go. So a better way of saying this is I am constantly putting us in a position where we are a small fish in a very, very large pond. And what I mean by that is I'm in Facebook groups, pay, you know, programs that I pay for, I, you know, we pay tens of thousands of dollars to be in, in the year. And then, you know, the team joins it as well. So I know like for us, like Laura and Melissa sit in on those and like they see it as well. So what this does is it's kind of like the first time that somebody ran the four minute mile, right? Nobody thought that that, you know that story, Alex, the mm -hmm. four minute mile story. Yeah. yeah. Where nobody thought it could be done. Somebody ran it. They finally broke the four minute mile. And then next thing you know, everybody's doing it. Hell, Alex might even do it just because mm -hmm. he knows it's possible. So the more that I'm a small fish in a very, very large pond, the more that all these quote unquote limiting beliefs that I have on myself, they start to go away because I think, well, I can't do that or I can't grow this fast or I can't make that much money or I can't uh, impact this many people. But then when I see all these other companies that are not only above where I'm saying, oh, this is like this, there's no way I could ever do that, but they're way, way, way past it. It, it totally just reshapes how I view and operate the business, but also on a personal level. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. No, I, I think just from the groups that I've been involved with, you know, I've been in like a podcast, uh, you know, buddy group of guys that have grown their podcasts to have like all these, you know, popular guests on and all these, you know, guys that do 20,000 downloads a month compared to what we do. And you know, I think we had 20,000 last year. So it, it's been nice. To, like, you know, I always have this growing up. It was always, you know, you don't want to be the smartest guy in the room. You never do. And I think for us as, you know, I've been here for almost two years and the company's, you know, still young, you know, that's a great position to be in that you put us in is to always be that, you know, dumbest person in the smartest, in the smartest room, like, or, yeah, you know what I'm trying to say? Like, mm -hmm. because then you never, if, if you start to think that you know it all, and then that's what I think it starts to go, okay, now we're going to lose some value because we're trying to teach, but we don't really even know we still have steps to go. So the groups that we've been in, They've been through their, they've been through all of our situations and, and they're younger people too, which I think resonates for us as a younger, mm -hmm. you know, our demographics, all 20s. So, or it, in a company. So uh, that's all helped. And like every, every group we've been in, I can say it's been very, um, it's really like helped like keep scaling the business, like go further and further and grow more and more. So like, and, and with that, I think what the problem is, is a lot of people don't necessarily identify these groups that they hang out in. They don't understand that they're actually kind of toxic. There's groups like, you know, it'll be a bunch of contractors and what'll happen is somebody will post something like, let me give you an exact example. I saw a post today that it was a, um, <clears throat> it was a homeowner that it was for a roofing company. Um, but it was, it was in a roofing group. I'm not part of it, but I saw somebody just post the actual, uh, excuse me, screenshot and then uh, the responses. And it was a, a homeowner who was in this group and it just said, Hey, look, I'm not a roofer. So I'll probably get kicked out of this group pretty quickly after posting this. But I just want to say a couple of things. I'm looking at my roof replace or fixed up. I had the insurance adjuster out here. This is, they gave me, you know, $13,000 um, allowance or insurance quote. So which effectively means that they can, you know, he can, the insurance company will spend 13 grand. Mm -hmm. And he said, the amount of effort that I've gone through just to get a roofer to give me a call has been unbelievable. He was like, I don't want to go through the home advisor slash Angie's list because when you go that route, they force a roofer to come out and give you an estimate because then that way they get their money. And a lot of roofers don't, you know, they realize it might not be a good use of their time. So the communication is terrible on that. And he's like, so after I went through that and nobody would give me a call back, I just want the regular route on the internet. And he was like, all the person, all you need as a contractor is have a half decent website, a couple good reviews and a phone number I can call and I would hire you. But most people don't have that. So I can't even reach out to somebody to get this fixed. Mm -hmm. So that was like the summary of the post. 
And instead of everybody going, wow, that makes sense. Everybody immediately jumped on him for going, well, 13 grand is not much money and this and that. And they completely just overstepped the whole point of the post. And, and yes, maybe the guy was messed up. Maybe the guy was, you know, 13 grand for the size roof he had. Maybe that was way low and mm -hmm. his expectations are off. But what he did was he called out this community by saying, look, there, nobody here has a good social media presence or website or anything that builds trust. Mm -hmm. And the group started one up in each other, talking shit to this guy about how he didn't know what he was talking about and this and that. So those are the types of groups that are actually toxic that you yeah. think because you're in this group with all these other people that are just like you and, and you're there with your contractor brothers and you know, everybody's trying to like out Hulk Hogan each other. It ends up just like you're, you're actually bringing each other down because it's this mob mentality where nobody progresses and you get a little bit better, but you know, even if you join these groups and you get way better, at some point, it's time to move on to the next stage, right? There's mm -hmm. stages in life, stages in business. And if you grow where you're now the top dog in that group, it's time to find, you can still stay in that group if you want, but you got to find a new one. And it's the same thing. It's like with friends, Alex, do you have a set of friends that when you hang out, you can be whoever you want. And then you have a set of friends where you, you kind of make the bed before they come over. Uh, I have like, yeah, like similar. I, I definitely have friends that um, I have friends that I talk about different things with, you know what mm -hmm. I mean? It's not maybe on that scale that you're saying, uh, but like I have friends that like, you know, they're more, you know, we're just gonna, you know, rag on each other, talk about sports, nothing serious. And then I have friends that we talk about like life stuff because I just think we're on like the same, you know, trajectory at the same time in our things you know what i'm trying to say so mm -hmm. it's yeah I, I do have like it's multiple friend groups and who you surround yourself in a situation that that's what i see and, and that's how i am too i have i had the friends that like i've been close with for you know a, like an unbelievable amount of time that mm -hmm. like i can say whatever i want i can be whoever i want mm -hmm. it's like totally unfiltered logan and then you've got the friends which is more like you talk a little bit higher level, you know, it's not necessarily cause like the other friends, you can't talk high level, but you just don't, you just kind of like, I see him and I revert back to like freshman year Logan and we all do that. And it's like, you know, it, it you just kind of go back to that stage, but then you have like the other set where it's like, I want the house to look okay when they come over. And mm -hmm. like, when we talk, we're talking about higher level things, you know, yeah. what are we doing in life? Are we, you know, do you do real estate? You know, I've been hearing more about this. You're like stuff like that, that it's just a different topic. And that's unfortunately where a lot of business owners, they stop with that first group because they're comfortable with it. They mm -hmm. go, well, yeah, this guy's an idiot, you know, 13,000 for a roof. I'm out. And they stay in that group. And the more that they see it and the more they're surrounded by it, the more it actually, they take on that role and that identity. Mm -hmm. So it, it's really, that's the biggest thing that I will say is like, I see a lot of marketers do that as well, where they just don't always look at the big picture where mm -hmm. what they do is they look at a website, you know, like as a whole, like they look at this website and what they'll do is like, Oh, that, this other person built the website. It looks like shit. It is not that fast. It's ugly, this and that. And I'm looking at it. I'm like, that's actually, it looks pretty good. It's pretty fast. It's not a 10 out of 10, but it's like an eight. And that person's client loves it. So like, what's it matter? Like if it works and the client loves it, then you don't need to sit there and rag on this person. But that's what a lot of these contractors do is they just end up trying to one up each other and it ends up becoming a race to the bottom where they're all protecting their ego, but nobody actually progresses. Does that make sense? Yeah. Or is that too, am I too off on this concept? No, no, that makes perfect sense. It's, it's easy to fit into a group like, I think a lot of people, like a lot of contractors will, um, and business owners in general, they know they have to be in these groups, these support groups, these, you know, they're supposed to be helping your business groups, but a lot of them are confident or cocky in their own way that I never do anything wrong. My business is perfect. But then on the other flip end, come home and complain to their wife of how everybody else is an idiot but them. And mm -hmm. those types of owners and business owners, they like that group of this is not a it's not a support group it's just let's build our egos group 
And then, and that's okay to be in some of those. Cause I mean, honestly, I, I would like to see like other people just like, yeah, let's rag on, you know, let's, let's have bad, let's have bad customer stories. But at the same time, there's another group that's like, you got like the CSA is a great example because their group is designed to help each other and they get vulnerable and you open up and it's, that's like, it takes a special person. That's why there's, that's, that's the difference between really good successful businesses and really shitty, you know, just floating by businesses. Yeah. What I, what I would say to like kind of end this topic is the number one thing that I see of these groups that where I can tell it's toxic is the culture of the group is an us versus them when it comes to working with customers. So it's, they look at customers as uh, POS is they're not good. They're just something that you got to like deal with to get by. And when that, that's the mentality, that's the identity that people take on. So mm-hmm. surround yourself with the right people, be a small fish in a big pond of people that have already been there.